welcome to Chief Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's tip is basically kind of an expansion on a prior video that we did. That video was called Cheap Joe's Mega Movers. And basically what we were doing was featuring this tool right here, which is a Cheap Joe's Mega Mover that has a silicone blade on it. They come in several different sizes and several different shapes and stuff like that. And recently on the internet, I've been seeing a lot of different fluid applications onto, you know, gessoed canvas. This is um, one of our own Cheap Joe's gessoed panels and stuff like that. So I wanted to try how this would work with the Cheap Joe's Mega Movers and Golden Flow acrylics. These are high flow acrylics. They're already in a fluid format, so you're not having to mix them with mediums and trying to get them to be a certain consistency. They already are there. The first couple of applications that you'll see here, you see some stage photos where I was just kind of playing around with stuff. They have a certain kind of texture to them because it's really tough to get the application completely and totally even. So you have some undulation in the application, which I, I really like, it's cool, but I also wanted some thinner, more transparent kind of applications on top of this. So those first layers that you saw were done with this, the Cheap Joe's Mega Movers, but now I'm actually going to be using the Cheap Joe's Interlocked Synthetic this 50-50 brush. And what I'm doing is you're probably going to have a heart attack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put the acrylic right on the surface. That's how I did it with these others. It works just fine <laughs> for me, in my opinion. And I really like the way that it looks, you know. So we're gonna put some layers on there. We're just putting a very, very thin application on here. And this blue is like, woo, in your face. And that's fine. We're okay with that. And do I have a set thing in mind? Nope, I don't. I have some kind of general direction for where I'm kind of hoping this ends up, but happy accidents and stuff, you gotta be ready to uh, make some changes and go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? So we are letting this color just kind of take its place in everything that we've already got going on. No, I did not tape my edges. I'm kind of letting those flow and I'm not exactly sure how I want to treat them. I may paint them a dark color to cover up any of the excess that has flowed over the edge. I may just kind of sand the excess off and then just re-gesso the edge. Don't know yet. Haven't, haven't figured it out. Depends on kind of what the finish of this looks like when we get there. As you can see this color is more opaque than some of the others that we have on there and that's fine i'm good with that and we're just going to get it nice and consistent here let some stuff happen and rinse that out um now the thing with the mega movers is that it's free it's kind of freeing inconsistent it's all over the place and kind of fun with the brush i feel like i have a little bit more control now in the other video with the mega movers that we did with this kind of like poured kind of application like this because the consistency of the acrylic in that video is a little bit thicker we have um a little bit more control um there was a, a, a whole lot of ease and stability to where we wanted the the color to go this is a little bit more happenstance so give us a little bit we're gonna dry this layer and uh, move on to the next pretty good so this blue that we just put on was um cerulean blue hue and as you can see it's <laughs> a power packed punch full of color uh, there. And now I'm gonna actually take permanent violet dark. You're probably gonna have a heart attack. That's fine. Trust the process or just close your eyes and hope. But we're gonna add another layer on like this. I really like these golden flow colors because 
Like I've said 8 million times, you've heard me drone on and on about it. Zero prep makes me happy. And so even mixing medium into my acrylic sometimes just feels like, oh no. So any of those kind of steps that I can skip, yay, I should totally do that. So again, we've got some color fluctuation in here. This one is a lot more transparent than the blue was. As you can see, the blue was like, woo, kick in the head. But we've got some interesting transition points here. One of the ones that I'm liking is there's iridescent gold fine underneath this. And we're actually getting in between here, we're getting an interesting kind of almost red happening. And then under here, we're getting a much, much deeper purple blue coming farther out into this space than I had planned. This Cheap Joe's Synthetic 5050, the inner, well, it's the interlocked brush, interlocked synthetic, does a great job at like smoothing out this fluid media and really getting a really nice application on here. All right, so we're gonna let that happen. Give this a little dry and see what happens next. So be right back. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about the ugly zone before. We are officially here. This is exactly what's happening. <laughs> this is the part where we push through and pretend like this is exactly what we meant. <laughs> Even though, eh, maybe not. So this actually is a Lizarin Crimson Hue. This is one of the initial layers that we put, I put on here um, with the Mega Mover, but I'm kind of liking this kind of opaque and transparent, no opaque and transparent kind of stuff that's happening. So I'm probably gonna move that direction a little bit more here. So uh, I'm gonna reinforce this color a little bit more, bring it more to the forefront. And you can see with the, the flow acrylics how easily this moves with your brush and um, how kind of friendly it is. Yeah, this is the part where you're like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's also a little bit terrifying at the same time. But we'll figure it out. We'll make something good come out of it. So all of this lays down really, really easy. We have a beautiful working surface with the Cheap Joe's gessoed, the Miller's signature gessoed hardboard panels here. Ooh, yum, that's pretty. I like that. I think I might add another little bit of this over here. Just cause I, I like the way that that moves right there. It's an interesting complement to this violet where this red and the blue are kind of working together. You know, and really, I mean, it's not like I, I had no plan, not plan. It was not a plan. It was a sort of plan for these kind of like curvilinear shapes kind of overlapping each other, kind of like lighting gels a little bit just kind of watching, letting the media do what it's gonna do and seeing where that takes me and stuff. So, you know, it's just basically play. And yeah, I do have some iridescent gold fine in here. Yeah, I do, but you know me. If some is good, then more gold is better. So there will likely be some more additions of that nature coming soon to a surface near you, namely this one. So we're going to let that dry and be what it's going to be. See where this takes us on the next phase. All right. This is turning on exciting, folks. I have no idea what's happening, which is largely the case in my life, but I'm actually, you're probably going to go, good Lord, what's she doing? Um, going back to the iridescent gold fine because I want to um, bring another layer in over the top of this. Um, so, 
And yeah, I just covered up most of that pretty red that I just put in, but it didn't go on anywhere. It's still there. It'll be underneath there. Hide now. Uh, and that's good. Uh, so we're going to... My wash water is looking rich. Need some fresh water here. Looking a bit like a Merlot. <laughs> uh, gonna blend this in over the top of what's going on. Create another layer. So some of these are reading transparent and some of them are reading more opaque and that's fun. I like it. My ultimate plan is just to kind of let these shapes dictate where they want this whole thing to go because it's doing some cool stuff right now. And as you can see, the water from my brush is causing this to beat up a little bit. But we'll just keep working it over that until it starts to dry. This is one of the fun things about the, the high flow is in these layers like this, it dries quickly. You can make decisions and move on. You're not standing there waiting for stuff to dry so that you can implement something else. You can, like what I'm doing, make a decision, hit it with a hair dryer, move on. You know, so this is fun and um, interesting and kind of dynamic at the same time. So, believe it or not, I'm going to do this again. Hopefully this is yeah, that's dry enough. Um, we're going to put another one in. And you're going, uh, enough with the gold. No! It's never enough. I'm um, going to just keep playing and playing and playing and layering until we're, until we're happy. You can see the direction that I'm going with this. How it, it's it's going to be a slow a slower build to when I know I'm happy, but the process moves pretty quickly of adding these layers. So, um, but this is basically the direction, folks, and you can see how these you know tools are working together: the paint, the surface, the different you know, application methods and stuff like that. But I'm gonna, you know, take it home, play with it, finish it up. I'll put some stage photos up so you can see how this moves and gels together and then show you the finished one at the end. But hope that you got something out of this and maybe a little bit of inspiration or a little bit of, hmm, I didn't know that. And that this was helpful and that you enjoy. So thanks for watching.